Welcome back to another episode of the Independent Adjustry Podcast. My name is Philly Hearn. We've had fantastic interviews over the past, I don't know how long. Um, and it's been fantastic talking to all the great different many people that have such different backgrounds. Um, and all have found success in our industry. Uh, I implore you to listen to that if you haven't already. Um, but I wanted to get into a kind of another mini series, and that's really talking about some things that, um, I see a lot of questions with. I see a lot of people struggle and a lot of people, for lack of a better word, failing it. Um, that I find, uh, makes your life a lot easier in this industry. So one of the first topics I want to discuss on this episode and, and the overarching episode for this one is being able to efficiently and effectively route and intake your claims, okay? This is a topic that comes up over and over and over again with um, with independent adjusters and appraisers and how to, you know, intake all these claims, how to, you know, manage them effectively, how to route them. Um, and, and it's something that, uh, fortunately for me, when I first started, I kind of just, realized how to do it. Um, but I've gotten so much better with experience. And instead of you having to go through the heartache and the headache of trying to figure this out on your own, I'm going to lay it out for you, build it for you brick by brick here in this episode. If you are listening to this on just a podcast, fantastic, awesome. I'm going to try to talk you through it, but just know our YouTube channel with iPath. If you go to the iPads and subscribe to the YouTube channel, I'm actually going to walk you through this on the YouTube and show you the actual information of how you intake claims, how I do it, and let you in on basically all the secret sauce you need to do, whether you're doing daily or catastrophic claims, okay? So first and foremost, let's talk about intaking claims, right? I don't care if you get one claim, five claims, 10 claims. Let's just start with a, a Monday. Okay. If you take in, let's say five claims, how I do it is I will intake those five claims into my inbox, right? I'll, I'll look at them. I'll make sure number one, the first thing I check, are they in my area or not? Right. I'll, I'll quickly pull up my phone. Um, uh, I usually use my phone to look at my email. So I'll just tap on the address, see where it's located. And if it's something I'm not interested in or I'm not going to take, that's an automatic reject, right? I'm not, I'm not taking that claim. Let's get that out. Let's delete that out of my inbox done um, and make sure I, I notify the firm. The next thing I do is say, okay, so let's say I rejected one and four of them are in my area, right? I'm looking at them. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and print those out at the, towards the end of my day, you know, cause Claims should stop coming in depending on where you live sometime between four, six, maybe seven o'clock at night, right? So, uh, I usually will start printing around, you know, whenever I get home for that day, let's say I was running claims. I print my claims. Now, maybe you guys think that that's old fashioned, but I like having a hard copy of every claim I do. I print them out. I look at where they're kind of located geographically. And then what we do is called bucketing. Okay. So you need to know your territory by buckets, right? For me, I'm placed in the center of a state and I cover almost the entire state. So there is North, there is South, there is East, and there is West. Those are my four major buckets, right? Now, yeah, there's Northwest, Northeast, and um, South, West, Southeast, all that kind of stuff. But for, I, I break it out into those buckets to say, okay, I got four claims in. Three of them are all heading south of you, and one is north of you. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to sit down and look at the three in the south, and I'm going to input them into whatever type of software or system you want to use. You can use Google Maps. I don't pay for any software for routing. If you do, that's great. But um, the one I'm going to show you that I use is called Route XL. It's it's really fantastic. Um, it's the easiest way for me to do, especially a bunch of claims. Now, if I've only got four, I usually do it a little bit of a different uh, method. I just use my phone to look at them and, and figure out the best route. But I'll take those four 
you know, input them into the system and see what the best route is, right? Look at the map. Um, on your phone, if you're doing this, this is how I do it with just four claims. I'll input the, I'll put, um, I first start out putting them on my calendar, right? In order. And I'll show you right here what I mean by that. So, um, what you will do is let me share my screen with you guys, right? Okay. Perfect. So this is route XL. I'm not going to use that right now. If you're watching. Um, what I'm actually going to do is go to my Google calendar. So this is just an example of claims. Let me find the free day here. Let's just, okay. So what I would do is, is let's say, um, you know, this says Wednesday, the fence, if you're looking at the screen, but basically I'll start with my first one. I'll insert it in my phone. I start with the name of the owner or insured, let's say John Smith. Okay. And what I do is put not confirmed. I put an asterisk in front and in back, not confirmed. Okay. Let's say he had two vehicles. I'll also put that there in, in the title. Um, I go ahead and set, okay, how much time is this going to take? Are these two hail claims that I can probably do them in 30 minutes? Okay. If, if it's, if it's maybe a specialty vehicle, I may need an hour for me. Again, my timing. I know that I, I do 30 minute blocks unless it gets more than two hail claims. Okay. Then I'll start going into giving myself an hour, but I usually do it 30 minute intervals. So eight to eight 30, um, eight 30 to nine, because let's say if this was one vehicle, uh, let's just say I had one vehicle or whatever. Um, I would put. 8 to 8.30, because it usually takes me 15 minutes to do the inspection, okay? And that gives me 15 minutes to get to my next destination. But you'll have to kind of factor that in. But usually I'll do 8 to 8.30, uh, no matter what. It's a 30-minute inspection, just about for any light auto. For heavy equipment, RVs, um, typically I'll give an hour um, just because there's more to it. And usually I like to try to, if they're a total loss, I'll call them in on site. Um, the other thing I'll do is put the insurance carrier, like XYZ insurance. Uh, but I would, you know, I, usually I'd put like USAA or LMRI for Liberty Mutual, just so I, especially if you're working with a bunch of different carriers, you can't kind of remember who they are. So when you talk to the owner, when you arrive, right, you're like, Hey, I'm going to be here on behalf of Liberty Mutual insurance. Uh, and you know what carrier you're speaking of, or again, knowing which guidelines to be applying or talking about. So. You add their address, you know, in here. Um, then, you know, basically I add a description. So what I would add is the first thing I add is what the damage is. Like I'll put hail damage. Okay. Just to know what it is. I will put their number. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, whatever their number is. And then I'm going to put, um, and that's about what I, and I'll put the vehicle. I'll put, um, 2016 Toyota Corolla in my, in my calendar. Um, and I will also, in some instances, some people like this, some people don't, I don't do it anymore. I used to, uh, I may want to put the last six of the VIN, you know, just so it's right there on your phone. Cause when you save it, when you go to your next appointment, you can also, for me on my calendar, which, you know, let me save this real quick and show you what that looks like. So it looks like that. It's a 30 minute time slot, right? But if I go into it, just like I would on my phone into my calendar on my phone, I can click on that and it will load from my location. Um, and map it out for you. Okay. So it's really nice to do that. Um, and I insert these before I put them into routing. Okay. Um, especially if you've only got four or five. Um, and then you just fill out your day from there, but you put them in. And the reason you do this is because then you have the address there, right? Like I showed you, you can just copy this and stick it into whatever software you want. Um, and for me, again, you can copy it or whatever, but I like to put them on my phone. 
Um, because what I'm doing on my phone is then going, I just click on that particular one on my phone. Um, and it comes up, right? And I hit route and then I'll hit add, a, a, you know, another destination and go back to my calendar and select the next one and then the next one. And you can just kind of flip between them or move them around to see what the best route is. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's tons of YouTube videos and things out there to show you how to use your Google, uh, whether it's Google Maps. I just use Apple Maps is what I use um, to shuffle those around and kind of look at the best order in which to do those. Um, but that's what I do. I put them on my phone for, especially if you've only got three, four. And then we talked about that one that's in, in, in North, right? I would get, I would try to schedule those four for the Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I would schedule my North one, hoping that maybe I'd get another claim North. If I don't, instead of running North, and then let's say you got a bunch more Tuesday South. Um, I would try to call them saying day if I'm in the South already, see if I can pick up another claim or two. But if not, um, you know, Wednesday may become some of your office day, handle some supplements, whatever it may be in the daily claims life, um, that you headed North and you just came home, got that done or whatever, and decided, you know, you're going to take a little bit of a time off or, or schedule those plans for Thursday, right? And you just keep rolling it over and over staying within that two days. So, but to look at like a route, you know, and, and I think I learned how to route so effectively uh, by doing catastrophic. So if you ever get a chance to field cat, um, it, it, it really will open your eyes because when you get 300 claims in your inbox, you got to be very efficient. And it's the same process, only scaled up much bigger and one additional step. So let's say you got 300 claims, which I'm going to flip back here and get rid of this just so I don't have it on my schedule. But this is back in July. But you will see here, let's see where I am. April. There we go. Just to look at our schedule here. So here you can see my schedule uh, based on you know, what I had that day in, in St. Louis. I was in St. Louis this year doing claims. So different days, meant different things. So, you know, just looking at busy schedules, right? So when you intake that kind of claim, this is what my schedule looks like. I've literally got here. Um, it's got where I'm staying um, at the hotel. It's got, you know, the names of the owners, the uh, insurance company. It says two vehicles, two vehicles, two vehicles. One vehicle, two vehicles. I've got a little space in there. And I will say this after, if you're running CAD, you've got, you know, 10, 15 claims, always leave yourself little breaks. They're great for bathroom breaks. They're great for catching up because there's times where, you know, owners want to talk your ear off. There's times where you're just, for some reason, traffic, you're running behind. And because you give them a 30 minute time slot, that's what I do. I say, I'll be there between eight and eight 30, nine and nine 30, 10 and 10 30, whatever it is, nine 30 to 10. I give 30 minute intervals because it makes sure they don't try to go out and run errands, which I've had happen a lot. And then they don't, sh they said, Oh, I thought you said 10. No, sir. I said nine 30 to 10 is when my arrival time would be. It puts you way behind. So I give them 30 minute intervals, especially in cat situations. And I always try to run ahead of time. So I always start my first one off 15 minutes early. I hit that one and then I just start moving. But I'll, you'll see, especially if you're watching this YouTube video, I have little breaks here. I have one between nine to nine 30. I have one between three and three 30. I have one between five and five 30. So, and some of that might be drive time as well, but try to give yourself a little bit of a break. Now on cat, I'm going to tell you right now, I eat my lunch in between claims, just scarfing down a peanut butter sandwich or something because you've just got to move, right? But when you get 20 claims like this, okay, just just to kind of show you um, how I would route it in my opinion, um, what I would do is, let's see here. So what I would do is come in, in here. Oh, it's not letting me grab my top. There we go. So I come into Route Excel. Okay. So this is what it looks like when you type in right, routexl.com, get started, get, get started. So the first thing I do, 
is click on the options tab, okay? And all you're going to do, max round time means how long you're going to be able to be out. I always put it at like, you know, how, as long as possible because it doesn't matter, right? I just want to see the route. Now, you're only able to do about 20 addresses here. So just keep that in mind that I, I go ahead and default departure time. When are you leaving? Well, for me, it's at 7 o'clock a.m. So that's when I'm going to select. Uh, default service time, you want to set that. How long is it going to take you to do that claim? Now, my default service time, I put 20 minutes, okay? That's just, that's just what I put. I think 20 minutes is fine for just about anything. Now, with the caveat that if it's an RV or something, I go in and switch it. But I, I do this before you start. Do it before you start. If you do it afterwards, it's a little glitchy, doesn't apply as well. So you hit save, right? So we're just going to show you Type my address here. You hit start here and finish here, right? If it's yellow, it means you're starting there or finishing there. And then let's type in, again, I'm just making up addresses. Uh, and it will find them, okay? So again, I'm just, I'm just making these up as I go. Three, three, four, seven. I, again, I'm just having it find addresses. Again, you'll want to be checking them. But again, you're just putting in the different addresses that, that you, that you're getting from your sheets. Um, so again, based on the area. Bear with me just a second. I'm just typing in these address, 5565. Five, okay, perfect. So we're just going to look at this, right? So I just typed in a couple addresses here. And then once you've got them in there, let's say that one of these, okay, so let's hit find route first. I just want to show you. So it calculates the route for you. Again, it's trying to maximize your route. So it tells me I need to start up here, which I'm starting basically the and it may start different than what you want, but what I do is go to addresses. So if there's one you've already booked, let's say you're on the phone calling these people, right? You may want to move these around based on, okay, I'm going to start all the way down south and it's not optimal. It'll tell you that, but it will start if you move that one and then you can just route accordingly, right? And you can keep moving these around. But if you just basically Scroll down to the bottom here. It shows what time I'm leaving. It, I won't be there until base. It says 942. So I'm going to look that one at 10 to 1030, right? I hope I do show up at 945. I'll leave at 7 a.m., be there at 945, 10 to 1030. Then the next one, I won't be to till 1215 based on 20, it factors in 20 minutes of service time. So I'd probably go ahead and tell them 1230 to one. Then. The next one with 20 minutes built in is at 122. So I would probably say 130 to two. And then the last one here says it's only like, it can't be but like five minutes away from each other. So I'd probably put that one at two to 230. And that tells you when you're approximately going to be home. So that's how I would then, with those, I would put those in my calendar then, right? And you may look at this, right? And, and there's one here. For you guys and gals that are listening to this, there's one that's obviously the one I started with is way out there. And that may be one you say, hey, I'm going to save for a different day to go that far south or that it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to delete that one off my route and find a, a, a more clustered route to get more bank. And I may add in claims, right? But on CAT, what I do, I get 300 claims. I literally take them and I try to see, I, I flip through every single one. I look at them. I see if I can see addresses that are kind of the same, especially on catastrophic deployments. It, uh, maybe in your area, you see that there's, you know, three in St. Cloud. I try to bucket them by city, right? Like um, I had a ton in Pacific, Missouri. I had a ton in Eureka. 
I had a ton in St. Louis proper. Um, I had some out in another city. So I would separate them based on city, right? That's a good way to do it. If you've got five in St. Cloud and five in Minneapolis, well, those should be different buckets for now. Now, you may end up on CAT. There may be 20 different buckets to start out with. But then when you look at it, you may find out that like Pacific and Eureka on a map in Missouri, very close together, right? They're only like 10 minutes driving time. So I can run a ton of my Pacific and then, you know, halfway through the day, switch over to Eureka or vice versa, um, depending on how the claims volume goes. But I try to get a route out of this for 20 of these. Now let's say just, just for, just for, um, just, you know, let's say this third one here. Um, I would click on it. I would hit edit. And let's say this one is an RV. I may give myself, um, extra time. I may put on here. I may scroll down and put an hour of service time, or maybe they have three vehicles, right? So you're looking at that too. You're wanting to also go through the claims and say, okay, this guy, I found two, two vehicles for them or three vehicles. You want to put your doubles, triple. Um, your RVs, make sure you're writing something on those. I'm trying, I'm sorting the claims out before I even put them in here, but I, I know this is like, a tr let's say that's three claims right there. So I put in an hour of service time and then rerun my route because as I will show you here and for you listeners out there listening, I'm going to talk about that as well. So that third claim. Yes, let's see now. So it really, it shows 60 minutes out beside it on this, or on the screen. If you're watching, if you're not, it will tell you out in parentheses by the address where it's listed. It'll say 60 minutes, meaning you're taking 60 minutes. Now on this example, doesn't matter because after that you're going home. But let's say you had four more claims after that, it would account for 60 minutes of service time. That's why I like this versus like Google Maps. Um, and I definitely don't want to pay for a service when I can use this. This goes up to 20. After that, you have to kind of get a little creative with adding more. But basically, in a cat situation, I'm running high end 25. So it's one of those things where if I can get 20 on here, I can kind of get creative from the last one I have on this map. But yeah, I try to get a really tight grouping. Like this isn't tight. This isn't very tight at all. If you're looking at this, you want it like where number two and number three is all my claims would be right there. They would be, I mean, I could drop a million pins right in there where I'd be running claims within 10 math support on catastrophe. With daily, this is something you would see where I've got to go out of here and pick this one up. It's telling me to go on down and pick up number two before number three um, on this map as, as far as addresses. That's not what I would do. Uh, I would see what happened because I call number two if they wanted to go a little bit later or they didn't answer number three answers first. I'd go ahead and put number three where number two should be and a lot for that hour of time and then go ahead and put number two where number three. So I'd flip flop them, right? But having a map up in front of you is very important while you're calling because as they change, you can move them around and reroute it and see where they fit. Now, if you've got 20 claims and you've already done, you know, 10 of them and, you know, you may not want to reroute it. You may want to look at it and say, OK, how far is it from the next claim? All right, I'll move you a little bit later. Try to move a couple of these up and you may have to go up. You know, you may have to go a little bit out of your way and back, but that's OK. You're getting the claim done. Um, so. You have to be resourceful, but this is how I do it. And I wanted to show this because it's so important to being efficient with your time. Like I said, that fourth claim down in Rochester in Minnesota, I mean, that's a ton of time to go down there. Now, um, I would probably, I may go do that on this route. Okay. I, I may do it. Um, but there is a good chance because I know in my area, and this is getting to know your area, which takes a little bit of time. That I will most likely, if I book that two or even three days out, because of how far that is, I will most likely get at least one more claim down around there, if not two. And I'm still going to get claims probably right where you're seeing them here um, in my main hot zone, which is a major city, Minneapolis, St. Paul. 
So I'm going to have a trace all the way down through there. So I'll be picking claims up on the way down or on the way back, which is an easy schedule, right? When you're able to either, you know, you call them and say, can I do you at 8 a.m.? And they say no. So you move everybody forward and you put them at the back of your day because you're coming back through anyway, right? So it, it's, it's easy to flip flop your schedule there. But again, I want to make it very clear and in, in looking at this calendar, you know, I do 30 minute intervals always. Even with two vehicles, I give 30 minutes because these were so tight together. If, uh, if you don't, if you notice here, these addresses were like 2208 Silver Lakes Estate Drive, 2424 Silver Lake Estates Drive. I mean, this one was right. They're all in Pacific here. And then Cedar Brook, uh, you'll, you'll notice if you ever map this out, Pacific is a very small town. So, um, it's, I could throw a baseball from one side to the other. And uh, my arm's not that good anymore. So what I'm saying is these are literally like two minutes, three minutes apart in the 30 minute intervals. And with that little break at the end, I I ran this on time. I run all my schedules on time. Now you've got to move. There is no lollygagging when you schedule something like this. But I've had other days where, again, you'll see here where it's a little bit more open. It might be because I'm getting toward the end of it, uh, of my of the cat deployment. So I've only got so many claims to, to take care of, but you'll notice where, you know, I'm down in Sullivan, uh, Cuba. Uh, so you see a bunch of different towns and I'm kind of making a very large loop to hit all these and come back. So it was, it was quite a bit of drive time. This was probably about two or three hours of complete drive time, um, to get into me. I actually, I'd say probably more like four or five hours total to get all the way around and hit all of these, but that's how you schedule. That's how you should be scheduling. If you've only got one or two, it's not a big deal. Put it on your calendar first, like this, and then map it out using, I use my phone. If you want to see it on your computer, you can map it out here and start dropping them in and whatnot. But Route XL is great when you're getting a bunch of claims, even in daily, you're getting 10 to 15 a day. It's really handy to just drop them in there and see what just doesn't fit and what your best route is and take that and plug it into your phone. Now, the next step to being very efficient is you have them in your phone just like this, right? Like I click on this. Let's see if I can get it to come up here or there. So like I said, I have the notes. I have the phone number and everything. Why is that important? Because then I can just go to my phone and one by one, just open up the calendar, open up their individual thing, and it will have their phone number already listed. So I just hit call and I call, right? If they don't, if they answer, great. You know, you, you go through your spiel of, hi, my name's Toby Hearn on behalf of XYZ Insurance. Uh, I'm the, uh, appraiser, uh, assigned to inspect your vehicle. I'd like to come out, um, tomorrow, if at all possible. I'm going to be in your area, uh, between would eight and eight 30 work for you. Uh, for an inspection, it only takes 15 to 20 minutes. You don't need to be present. I just need keys um, because I do need it here access for the odometer. I need to get the manufacturing label and all the other interior photos that the insurance should require. Most people um, are expecting your call and excited to hear your call. Now, some people may be mad that you haven't already called. It, it just, it is what it is of when you get the claim, when you're able to get to it. Um, but this is all I do first as I call on cats. I mean, I spend... I don't even leave my house until I've gotten almost all my calls made to get down there for field work, right? Like I'll take two, three days here at home, not spending money with hotels, making all these calls, but you call and again, you go through that spiel with them and get them set on your calendar. And then you go from, remember, very important, and I'll just pick a place here, but very important to put, um, you know, I always type in the title again, John Smith, uh, you know, two vehicles, and I'll put not, asterisk not confirm. As soon as they confirm, I take that off there, which they should confirm when they answer. If they call you back, you go to it and you take that off and then you just status your claim and hit save and you're good to go, right? The address is there, everything you need. But I'm also, when I'm calling them, I'm usually got my AirPod in. Because I'm looking at my phone and saying, is your address 1234 Sunshine Boulevard, uh, Pacific, Missouri, or whatever? And they're like, yes. Or if they say no, 
that's when you got to plug in a different address. And you may just want to stick it in here if you've got enough space in your routing to just kind of look at where is it in relation or can you come to my work? It's only five minutes away. Sure. But then you've got to make sure you look and maybe allow a little extra time for that. Um, but I love having it in my phone because again, here's the other thing. I don't have to flip through all those papers. Once I've made all my initial calls, called everybody, most of the time I get 80% of them scheduled or they're calling me back the same day and I've got them scheduled. But let's say you get through two days or even three days of calls on a catastrophic event, right? You got to get through all the initial calls first, okay? That's the most important part. And you're moving on day by day. So I got my 20 for uh, Tuesday. I got my 20 for Wednesday called. I got my 20 for Thursday called. I've got my 20 for Friday called and Saturday, whatever. But I would tell you that for every 20, for every full day, which is about 20 to 25, it takes me roughly about an hour to two hours, depending on if everybody answers or not. I'd say two hours for each day you need to schedule. So that means that an eight hour taking, you're working without getting paid. So just that's why you need to get paid very well for cat. But beside the point, it will take me four, eight hours to do four days, right? To schedule out four days worth of work. Um, and again, sometimes I'm doing 25 or 30, uh, claims a day or trying to, um, but I'm, I'm spending, dedicating that time just to calling. If they don't answer, I have an automated text template that I grab. I go back into my calendar, hit that number to send text message. I plug it in with their name, information, yada, yada, yada. And I send it out. Um, you know, and, and I make sure I put their name in it, especially their last name. Uh, for, I usually do first and last name. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Mr. Sh you know, Mr. John Smith or Mr. And Mrs. John Smith or whatever, you know, and I have a template. If you're not in IAPath, I, that's one of our many tools we give out, um, of the text template so that as soon as you call and they don't answer, you leave a nice voicemail, tell them why. I don't leave it time because that's going to change most likely if you're running through calls. So I just tell them, Hey, I'm trying to get, uh, I'm going to be in your area tomorrow. I don't know when I'm going to be back again. Even if you're in that area for the next four days, that's what I say, because I don't know for sure when I'm going to be in his specific area. So I, I tell them that, tries to give them a sense of urgency. I send the text immediately after I've done everything I need to called status, whatever. But when you get through all those calls three or four days out, guess what? When I'm, I'm now driving, right? Or I'm heading down to get in the area. I'm, I'm, you know, touchdown, um, trying to run claims. Um, my drive's 12, 16 hours, whatever it is. All I've got to do is go into my phone as I'm driving my AirPod in and look at my list or my wife, Ashley can call for me. All she's got to do is go in and see which ones are not confirmed. Call it all the information's right there. The insurance carrier, uh, the number, the vehicle, what the damages are. Everything's right there. So why I don't have to flip through and find these pieces of paper anymore. It's all right there. We actually even linked our calendars together so she can see what I see. Um, and when I brought in Jim Berger, who's been on the podcast to work with me, we actually actually linked her calendar to his. So while I was calling for all of mine, I actually was calling for his uh, and making sure he was scheduled and routed. Sounds like a sweet deal. It was, but we love Jim and it made it really easy. So we knew exactly what he had coming in to be written. Um, but you can link calendars with other people. So if you're thinking about getting someone to help you do routing and scheduling or working as a team, you can link these schedules and then you'll be able to see each day, like you start back from, okay, my first day when I touch down is Thursday. I have two not confirmed. We need to call them again, status them that they're second tip or I get them scheduled or they may have to move to the end of the line at that point, right? Because if you start running your day, right? Let's say Thursday is the first day I hit the ground and I'm running and I've called them and that's my second attempt or let's say third attempt for that matter. They're probably getting sent in by the third attempt saying, hey, cannot reach and, they're, and they need to be kicked until someone can reach them. And they go to the back and learn. They've been called three times. They've been given their opportunity. That's what insurance wants. They want you to move on to the people that are answering and, and wanting their claims done quickly. But if it's a second attempt, 
I take those. I don't delete them off my calendar. I move them to my next uh, open day that I'm not scheduling for yet and just put them there and say, these are little placeholders, right? So I just keep moving down the line. And then Friday, oh, I've got four not confirmed. I need to follow them again. And most of the time in cat situation, if they don't get back to you by the third time, either the number is wrong or they're out of town or they really don't care anyway. So they can get put to the very back of your list um, to begin with. But that's why I wanted to go through this because I see a lot of people doing it and maybe you have a better way. Maybe you do. And that's fantastic if you do. But it's it's very important to be using some kind of routing system like Route XL um, to route your claims and, and check it and use your calendar or use whatever you're using. But this is the way I operate. And I'm able to bang out 20 to 30 a day in a cat situation for daily claims when you're able to do that and schedule and do that as efficiently as we do it, five to 10 claims is, is nothing. I mean, I'll knock out 10 claims in one day. I don't even have to use Route XL for 10 claims because I plug them all in. I know my area. Once you know your daily area well enough, you know what buckets are going in. So it's like, okay, I got six over here in, in the east area. Cool. I'm going to put those all on my calendar. And then one by one, I'm going to click and look on the map and route it, and I'm just going to move them around to see what is the most efficient route to, to get them. Do I want to start at the at the furthest one from me and work my way back, or do I want to start with the closest and move my way forward? My recommendation, always start with the first, the closest to you, and here's why. If you call them and they say they can it, then you can put them at your end of the day and you're coming back through, right? Or you can work that out. But if you start with the furthest and they screw your schedule up, and say they can't go till the, they have to go first thing or, or let's say end of the day or middle of the day, they're going to throw your schedule up. Whereas you want to get as many people scheduled as possible. That's the name of the game. The more people you schedule, the better off you're going to be. So that's my, but make sure you're using this and then use your calendar. It's very important. Put the two vehicles, put the insurance, right? Remember John Smith, two vehicles. Uh, LMI, let's say it's Liberty Mutual and it's not confirmed. And once it's confirmed, you delete that. You put the address. I do 30 minute intervals, but it's based on how long it's going to take you to scope that view, right? Not to write it. If you're writing it on site, maybe you got to take more time. I don't, but you may. Um, you're, you know, adding your location and it's great because when you're out in the field, you're just clicking one after another to route it, right? And you're putting the information again. I just want to go through this. Let's say, uh, it's a deer. I put, I just put deer hit. Sometimes I even do actually even others. She'll put little cute icons or whatever on there, you know, a deer and a, and a pal sign or whatever, but it's a deer hit their number. So then you can easily call it. If they have multiple numbers, I put them in there. If there's notes, like, uh, I'll put, you know, once it's confirmed or whatever, Ashley loves doing this. She'll put an asterisk to say, see notes. Because it means something about this claim, like uh, owner not present, the key is left in flower pot by entry door or whatever. So I remember that because you, when you're running a bunch of claims, you're going to forget that kind of stuff. And that's just going to make you look bad when you call and ask. And they said, we told you it's going to be in the flower pot or you can't get a hold of them and don't do the inspection. Um, but put whatever notes you need there. And then I'll put the type of vehicle as always, 2018, uh, GMC, Acadia or whatever. And again, you may want to put the last six of the VIN just because again, it's right there on your phone. So you don't have to go look at your sheet of paper and verify you're right there. So you walk up to the vehicle and the first thing you do is check the last six in the window. You know, it's the right car. I. I can't tell you how many times I've done inspections in huge hospital parking lots or big, um, you know, corporate, uh, warehouses or whatever with hundreds of cars and the owners just left it unlocked or I'm going to find it. And there's 15 lots and you've got, you know, you wouldn't think it'd be that hard to find a Dodge Viper or whatever it is. And there's like 50 on that lot. Cause I guess everybody wanted to buy the same car, but I digress. That's how you route efficiently. So let's go over it. I'm going to come back to full screen here. So give me just two seconds. If I can uh, find my little bar. Oh, there we go. 
Okay, perfect. Welcome back. Sorry. Um, hopefully for you people that are listening, you will come on and just take a look at that if you're interested in it. Hopefully it made sense, but, but let's go through the steps again just to make sure we're clear. Number one, intake claims, claims to me, 5, 15, 40, 80, 1,000, doesn't matter. Let them hit your inbox, wait till the end of the day or towards the end of the day. Go through each one of them in your email to verify if they're even something you're going to take or if you're rejecting, right? Make that decision as soon as possible. Notify the firm, get it out of your queue. Next, you want to print them. As you're printing them, I kind of re- I glance over them of what area they're in. And then I start already start to separate. I start to catalog or, or bucket out like, okay, this is over here in the West region. This is the East. This is North. This is South. I do that on cat too, because I look at where the cities are located. Like, okay, um, for, for St. Louis is the point of Pacific and Eureka were right there. Right. So I called that my center. St. Louis was kind of my east, um, and I had some to the southeast there, so I put those kind of in the same bucket. Um, I had some uh, a little north, uh, which was a small bucket, so I actually put the north and the middle uh, of my uh, together because there just wasn't enough north, uh, and they weren't too far away. They're like 20 minutes when I'm talking north, and then the big bucket was out west, uh, another big bucket, so it was like east, central, and West is how I bucketed out the claims. And I put them together still by city. I didn't put them all together. I made sure they were at least by city because I didn't know which cities I'd be able to get out to in West. And I had to actually make two trips out West, two different ways of routes that made it better for me because of the amount of claims. But you want to kind of start already sort them out, right? The next thing I would do, if there's a bunch of them, I would start by taking a bucket and putting them into Route XL, setting your time of service, which if they're all hail damage flames or all collision or whatever you're doing, um, you're going to want to set that probably around 15 to 20 minutes. Again, if it ends on a weird time like 9.53, just call it 10 o'clock, right? And give yourself a little bit of extra time. If it ends at uh, 9.15... You can say 9.15, but I'm always going 9 to 9.30, 9.30 to 10. So if it's at 9.15, I'd say 9.30, show up a little early, right? You always want to be early. That's great. Do not be late. If you start getting late, you'll have a lot more stress. Owners get upset and you start getting calls and 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 it can snowball on you in a hurry. But you bucket those out, right? You've got, you know, uh, the West, right? And you start putting them in Route XL building a route. Then you put them in order. I put them in order and the initial calls, I put them on my calendar first, right? I typed in all their information, the carrier. We went through that multiple times, right? The name, the carrier, not confirmed is a big piece to put on there. How many vehicles have they got multiple? Put your notes in there, the cell phone or their phone number contacts, type of vehicle. Maybe the last six of the VIN is very helpful. And then you've got it there. And then call from your phone or your initial, right? And then just flip that piece of paper over, keep them in order. Once you've gone through all of them, you can see what's not confirmed, paper clip them. And I write, I put a post-it note on them and say Monday or whatever day it is. That's my stack for Monday that I'm going to be running. That's done out of the way. Next stack for Tuesday. Next stack for Wednesday. Next stack. You keep doing the same process. And then once you get to the end, remember, once you've made all your calls, and send out your text, hopefully by a text template you build, or if you're with IAPATH or join IAPATH, we're happy to give that to you. If you reach out to me, I'd be happy to send you mine. It's pretty standard boilerplate of what I actually say to the customer in the voicemail. Um, but again, it, it saves a ton of time uh, having that already ready to go and just plugging in uh, the name, the carrier, and maybe the vehicle information or of what day and time what day or, or whatever I'm looking to potentially do the inspection. Um, once you've done all that, then all you're doing is going back to the first day and seeing what's not confirmed on your calendar, making your second attempts right. Um, my wife does it. I don't do it as much, but she likes to do it. Is she'll put beside it, not confirmed, and she'll even put second attempt or two or second to let her know that we're on our second attempt. Because by the third attempt, if they don't answer, and don't call back by usually typically by the afternoon of that day. I've called them because I'm usually, I try different times, but, but the last day I call them 
they're getting they're getting sent in or rejected basically and tell them I can't get a hold of the owner, make three contact attempts. And it's out of my hair. It's out of my buck. And if that time slot opens up and I've still got, like I said, out west, I'm doing 20 and I've still got more in my west bucket to try to get in or have not been able to fit in yet, I will put those in there. I will, I will try to squeeze one in if I can find one that maybe fits in my round, right? You're always trying to make sure you're maximizing your time out in the field while you're routed. Other thing is, is if somebody's got some weird, wacky schedule, works nights, that isn't up during the day, yada, yada, yada. Typically speaking, those people are, are, are understanding uh, of the fact that, you know, massive catastrophe, they understand that you're trying to work with them. So I try to be a, a work with them, but I'll tell them, hey, you know, okay, or, you know, they're 30, 45 minutes in a different direction in a different bucket, right? I'll write down their work address. When are you available? Nine to five, Monday through Friday at your work, which is 30 or 45 minutes in the opposite direction of the day I'm going to be where you're home at. No problem. Do you mind if I call you back within 24 to 48 hours once I get to that area uh, of my claim and you'll be one of my first calls to let you know when I can get you scheduled for? Yeah, that'd be fine. And I'll, I'll say, you know, if, if you... Uh, if you have any questions or think that you know, I forgot or whatever, feel free to text me, call me, but I'll be back in touch. And I even ask them what's their best form of communication because I'll text them or call them, whatever they prefer. And like I said, if call doesn't get them, text usually works. But I tell them there's nothing wrong with telling uh, a couple people, hey, I'll, I'll call you back in and status it. I status it that I called and left a message because we were not able to set anything up. And that owner's aware that I'm going to get back to him in 24 to 48 hours, depending on when I get to that bucket of claims. Do not let somebody hem you up into giving them a time and date right then and there, especially if they're in a completely different location. Because what you're going to do is try to book that for the next available day, and then you'll get more claims or it will just completely screw you up in the sense that uh, yeah, maybe that's the bucket you were going to do that day, but that should have been at one o'clock, not at 8 a.m. And it's just completely messed up the route for you. You can always do that if you really got to accommodate somebody, but try not to try to just ask them, call them back once you get to that area. Uh, and usually most people are perfectly fine with it and understand with who you're talking to. If they're a talker, um, like me and they're going to talk your ear off on the phone for 30 minutes, just to get an appointment scheduled. You may want to consider adding a little bit more time to your inspection because they're going to want to talk, especially, you know, you get these old people that love to talk and you want to have the customer service. So you may want to just judge by the phone call how quick that's going to go. And on the other hand, if the owner says, I'm not going to be present. He's there. Do what you got to do. Uh, great. That's one I may cut it down and say, yeah, I'm going to be there in and out in 10 minutes because I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to do anything. I'm taking my photos, doing my scope, and I'm out, excuse me, as soon as possible. So that's how to route effectively and efficiently going through your claim. And when you complete them, just a word to the wise, I would hold on to those hard copies until they're paid out, right? And I also would recommend you put them on some kind of a tracker, like an Excel spreadsheet uh, for that firm, have one built for each and every firm. I'll probably do another podcast on that about tracking things um, to make sure that you're getting paid accurately. That is a big sticking point in this industry that, that claims aren't paid or things are missed or the rate they told you is not what got paid. And, and having those hard copies, those file numbers, those claim numbers will really help resolve those issues. Um, so make sure you track. But again, routing, so important because if you do not route efficiently, you are wasting a ton of your time. You may be wasting a ton of your money with gas um, and, and time is money. But I wanted to go through that and kind of show you how I do it on a, again, dumbed down level. I wasn't going to go through, you know, 20, 30, 40 claims um, when I'm in catastrophic situation and mode. But I think you get the gist of it. Please feel free to like, share, and comment. I'd love to hear your comments on how you may route it, how you find effective, what you think of my method. Um, but we found that that's the most effective method for us. Um, and it's it's so crucial to you being successful, especially on a catastrophic level, but even in a daily scenario, because the way you route um, can save you a ton of time in your life. 
um, and make sure you don't burn out and make sure you're making the most bang for your buck by grabbing the most flames you can when you go a certain way, right? With that being said, it's been another wonderful episode of the Uncut Adjusted Podcast. Keep walking your path and claiming your life.